So we can see from example six, performing a Riemann sum when given a function um, and having to find all those values takes a lot of time. So quite often on the exam, when the writers are looking for students to perform a Riemann sum, they present a function that is continuous, and then they give a particular set of values of the function through a table. So let's go ahead and solve example seven here. We uh, are looking to approximate, because again, a Riemann sum is an approximation, the area under the curve using a left Riemann sum with six subintervals, and then a right Riemann sum with six subintervals. So what's really happening with example seven? Let's, let's go to part A first, so the left Riemann sum. I'm going to make a graph of our table of values right here, which is something that you can do, but you don't have to do. All right? By doing so, it may allow us to have a better idea of what's going on with our function. All right? So we know over 1, up 10, so I'm just going to eyeball things. Over 1, up 10, then over 3, up 14, over 4, up 15, over 7, up 17, over 8, up 19, over 10, up 20, and then over 14, up 11. Right, so we're back down like here. All right. So if we were to actually, um, you know, we know this function is continuous, so we see that we have a graph which is doing, perhaps it's doing something like so. Okay, and we're going through these data points right here. And we're interested in doing a left Riemann sum, which means we want the upper left corner of each of our rectangles to touch the curve. So I'm going to drop some verticals down here for each of these. And we're going to make some rectangles, and we want the upper left corner of the rectangle to touch the curve. So there's our first rectangle. And our second, our third, our fourth, our fifth, and then finally our sixth. Okay, so the final rectangle is well above the function, but the previous five are all below. Okay. Now we are charged with finding the area of each of these six rectangles. Well, the first rectangle, um, it's going, it's touching at this point, and we know that this is 10 units up, so we have a height of 10. And then our base, well, we're going from one to three, because we were over one, and then we were over three, and then four, seven, eight, ten, and fourteen. So to go from one to three, that's a change of two. So we can see there that when we're doing our first rectangle, all right, this is our left sum, right? Our first rectangle, the base is two, and the height's ten. The second rectangle, we go from 3 to 4, so that is a change of 1 for our base. And the height, this time, is our second data point, which we know was up 14 units. So we have 1 times 14. So the first time we used the 10, the second time we used the 14, for our third rectangle, we're going to use the 15. Right? And we're going from 4 to 7, so that's a change of 3, so we're going to have 3 times 15. Our next rectangle, we go from 7 to 8. 7 to 8, so that's a change of 1. And our height will be the next y value, which is 17. Right. And then we go from 8 to 10. So our fifth rectangle, the base is 2. And the height will be 19. Oops, I'm off the page there. Okay, and then finally, our last base is 4. And our height is 11. Excuse me, not 11, it's 20. We, I don't want to skip that 20. So 4 times 20. We don't end up using 11. Here's the 11 right here. You can see that it's not part of um, the top uh, border of any of the rectangles. All right. So we use the 10 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 values. We use the first 6 when we're doing a left Riemann sum. Okay, so uh, if we map this out here, we've got 20 plus 14 plus 3 times 15 is 45 plus 17, a pair of 19s is 38, and 4 times 20 is 80. We take out our calculator, and this works out to be 214. So there's our left approximation. Now, I started by making this graph over here, but I understand that this really wasn't necessary, because the numbers that I used, 10, 14, 15, 17, 19, and 20, for the heights, they're all right here for us. 
Okay, we're doing a left sum, so we're looking at the left values. All right, let me look at it another way. The first interval went from 1 to 3. We're going from 1 to 3. Well, what's the change from 1 to 3? Now well, it's 2. And we have two choices here. We have the left end point and we have the right end point. We're doing a left sum, so we're going to end up having the 2 and the 10 being multiplied together. Right. The next time around we go from 3 to 4, that's a change in 1. We have the left side and the right side. We choose the left side because we're doing a left sum, 1 and 14. Right. And then again, a change of 3, a change of 1, a change of 2, and a change of 4. And in each case, when we look at our change, we take the left side. So here, I'm circling all of the same products that you notice are right down there. We don't actually need the graph at all. We can get all of our answers from the table, get all of our values, rather. When we do a right Riemann sum, okay, now, we change over to the, we're going, we're still going to use the same bases, but we're not going to use the left end point of our rectangle. We're going to use the right end point. So we're going to do the 2 and the 14, and the 1 and the 15, and the 3 and the 17, and the 1 and the 19, the 2 and the 20, the 4 and the 11. Basically, this time the 11 does get used, and the 10 is ignored. So when we put this all together, again, 2 times 14, and then 1 times 15, and then 3 times 17, and then 1 times 19, 2 times 20, and finally 4 times 11. All right, so we have 28 and 15, and 3 times 17 is 51, and then 19, and 40, and 44. So when all this goes together, we have a total of 197. And that would be the approximation for a right Riemann sum, whereas the 214 is the approximation for the left Riemann sum.